Hello guys, Kim Schisser here, bringing you another Eldering build. And this one going to be a pure intelligence mage build. For me, mage is the ultimate ranged damage dealer. And I believe I did put together a very fun, but equally destructive mage build that will carry you through the different stages in the game without breaking a sweat. The most challenging task when making this build was choosing a set of sorceries from the numerous spells at our disposal. However, I spent a lot of time searching and testing different spells to create a build that would enable you to adapt to any situation and overcome any encounter. Before we start, and as always, thank you so much guys for your feedback and support. If you have any ideas to further improve this build or my content in general, please let me know. And if you have any questions regarding this build or Elden Ring in general, please don't hesitate to ask. I will try to answer to the best of my limited knowledge. Without any further delay, let's jump right in. The first spell we are looking at is the Great Glint Stone Chart. It has a fast cast speed, good damage, and excellent range. This is likely going to be the most used spell in your arsenal to quickly dismiss any common enemy in one or two casts. A very good approach is to chain cast the Great Glint Stone Shard into other spells like Comet, not only to speed up the cast speed of the follow up spell, but also to deliver a good burst of magic damage in such a short period of time. To learn the Great Glint Stone Shard, as well as the Swift Glint Stone Shard, head to the cemetery close to the Lake Facing Cliffs Great Location, over here on the map, and obtain the Academy Scroll. Turn it into Muriel, Pastor of Vows, at the Church of Vows, to learn both spells from him. The next spell we have in our build is Comet. It is one of the highest damage dealing sorcery in our build, and you can charge it up dealing roughly 20% more damage. It also can pierce through multiple enemies and has slightly better range than the Great Crimson Stone chart. However, these amazing perks do not come cheap since it is also one of the highest FP consumption sorcery in your arsenal. I use Comet to deal with high HP enemies and bosses, especially the ones too fast to be pinned down by Comet Azure. You can learn Comet when you reach Raya Lucaria Academy from the schoolhouse classroom grace location, follow this route to easily obtain it. We are also using Cannon of Haima. It is an explosive magic projectile that you can lob over your enemies, dealing a huge amount of magic damage in a wide area and knocking back any human-sized enemy or boss. You can also charge the Cannon of Haima to increase its damage. Pre-aiming this sorcery more often than not yields better results than just locking on your target. This is your go-to sorcery to deal with multiple enemies close to each other. Since we are not using a melee weapon for this build, I wanted to add a spell blade as an alternative. And my first thoughts went directly to Adula's Moonblade. It has great cleave damage and can cause frost build up. However, it did not feel as rewarding as it was before patch 1.04. So after a lot more testing with different spells, I decided to add the Gavel of Haima instead. You summon a magic great hammer that stumps the ground dealing a substantial amount of magic damage to enemies around the impact. It will also interrupt and potentially stagger any normal sized enemy or boss. In patch 1.04, this sorcery received increased cast speed and decreased recovery time. But more importantly, it allows the caster to easily withstand enemies attacks while casting. Having hyper armor while casting the Gavel of Haima will enable you to punish enemies trying to get in your face and not the other way around. To learn both the Cannon of Haima and the Gavel of Haima, you have to obtain the second green stone key found in Raya Lucaria Academy. I will quickly show you the route from the Debate Parlor Grace location. After obtaining the key, make sure to also grab the Twin Sage Glintstone Crown 
and the Adorals Greenstone staff. Hand the key over to Tops at the Church of Iris. In return, you will receive the erudition gesture. After that, head to the converted furnished tower from the Grand Lift of Dectus Grace location. Make sure to equip the Twin Sage Greenstone Crown and perform the erudition gesture to remove the magic barrier and gain access to the tower. From that point, simply make your way to the top of the tower and open the chest to obtain both spells. I also chose to add Rani's Dark Moon Sorcery to our build. You incarnate a Dark Moon and launch it towards your enemy. That deals a great amount of frost damage in a small radius on impact. It has a great range, good tracking, and not only it does reduce the target's magic damage negation by 10%, but also has the potential of instantly applying frostbite to your target, reducing the target's damage negation by 20%. Total damage negation reduction is around 30%, which lasts for one minute. I use Rani's Dark Moon as an opener for any major encounter, reducing my target's damage negation and maximizing the potential magic damage we can deliver. To obtain Rani's Dark Moon Sorcery, you must make a significant progression in Rani's quest chain. Since there are too many steps involved to list here, I trust you will consult a guide to easily obtain it. I cannot have a pure mage build without at least suggesting Comet Azure. In the right circumstances, this is the single most devastating damage dealing spell in the entire game. It works a lot better against large hitbox enemies, but it can also work equally well against small, fast enemies when you know they are going to remain stationary for a few seconds. And a few seconds is all you need to vaporize any enemy or boss from existence with this sorcery. This sorcery can trivialize any major conflict in the game. You can obtain Comet Azure from Primeval Sorcerer Azure in Mount Gelmir over here on the map. The last sorcery in our build is Terra Magica. You place a magic sigil on the ground, giving you a magic buff that increases all your magic attacks by 35% as long as you remain within the sigil radius. To obtain Terra Magica, head to the Academy Crystal Cave over here on the map. Progress until you reach the Crystalline's bosses, defeat them and take the elevator behind them to reach the top of the tower. Use the ladder to reach the chest containing the spell. Let's quickly take a look at the staff we are going to use to cast the sorceries for this build. I chose the Canyon Regal Scepter because it offers the highest sorcery scaling in the entire game with no trade off, like the Lusat staff. It also boosts the Full Moon sorceries. The Lusat's Greenstone Staff offers 10-15% to extra magic damage, but for the cost of 50% extra FP consumption. It is worth mentioning that the Prince of Death's Staff will outperform any other staff in the game at 80 face and 80 intelligence. For the offhand, I chose the Azor's Greenstone Staff. Even though we are not going to use it to cast our sorceries, it will still provide the 40 virtual dexterity, which will decrease the cast speed of our sorceries. Along with Radagon Icon, you will reach the cast speed reduction cap from Dexterity, which is 70. Keep in mind that equipping the other skin to Sun Staff will increase the FP consumption of your spells by 22%. If you are interested in maximizing the damage potential of your sources instead, you can make a small investment in strength and equip the Jellyfish Shield to increase all your damage by 20% while under the effect of Contagious Fury for 30 seconds. Let's take a look at how to build our character. My starter class here is the Astrologer. Vigor is at 43, Mind is at 40, and Endurance is at 28. I did invest 2 points in Strength to equip the Azure's Greenstone Staff. Intelligence is at 80 to reach the Soft Cap. For our gear, I choose the full Azure's Greenstone set, not only because for me this completes the Sorcerer aesthetic look I was going for, but also the Azure's Greenstone Crown increases the damage of Comet Azure and Comet by 15 and 10% respectively. However, it will also increase the FB consumption for all our spells by 15%. Another beautiful set and one of my personal favorites is Albrecht's set. 
I would like also to hint that you can equip the full veteran's armor set along with the other skin stone crown for a much better damage negation and boys. The first talisman we are using is the Graven Mass. It will increase sorcery damage by plus 8%. Magic Scorpion Charm will increase the magic attack bar by 12% as a cost of increasing the physical damage taken by 10%. Our sources cost a lot of FP as well as stamina, and that's why we are using the Green Turtle Talisman to increase our stamina recovery speed. For the last slot, either use Radagon Icon along with the Azurus Green Stone Staff you will maximize the cast speed reduction from dexterity. However, if you are looking for more damage, you can always use the Sword Ritual Talisman, increasing all your damage by roughly 10% as long as your HP is full. Godfrey Icon will increase the damage of charged spells by 15%, like Comet and Cannon of Hyma. And if you are having a problem maintaining your FP, use the Primal Green Stone Blade for a plus 25% spell cost reduction but it will reduce your maximum HP by 15%. For the Flask of Wondrous Physic, use the Magic Shrouding Crack tier. It will increase your magic attacks by 20% for 3 minutes. The Cerulean Hidden tier will eliminate the FP consumption on all your sorceries for 15 seconds. This will enable you to channel Comet Azure for 15 seconds without worrying about the high FP consumption of the sorcery. I was constantly using Godric's Great Rune, increasing all my attributes by plus 5. Also having a dagger with the Golden Vow Ash of 4 on it will increase all your spell damage by 11%, as well as improve your damage negation. In the end, nothing unlisted in this entire build is set in stone. For example, I didn't feel the need to use a melee weapon, but you can make a small investment in either strength or dexterity and use either the Moonveil Katana or the Dark Moon Great Sword, two of the most incredible intelligence weapons in the entire game. If you are having a problem overcoming any fight as a pure mage, you can use the Gravity Sorceries. Although they do scale in damage with intelligence as any other sorcery in the game, but they do physical damage instead of magic damage. And if you are willing to take this build beyond 150, I suggest investing 33 points in face to unlock both Golden Vow and Howl of Shapriri. I did spend a lot of time testing things around, trying to make this a fun and well-optimized build. However, if you can think of more ideas to further improve this build, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching guys, and have a great day.